what's going on guys and gals? This is Auto Tech. I'm getting a little bit of a rainy start on my way up to Edmonton here. Not a big deal, but that does bring us straight into today's topic. If you spend any sort of time on a motorcycle, if you're exposed out in the elements at all, I mean, rain is almost inevitable. Like, um, you know, if you're going to sit there and every time you see a cloud in the sky, you don't take your bike out, I mean, chances are you're not going to do a whole lot of riding unless you live in the desert. <laughs> but you know what? Even if you are in the desert, you can kind of get some sort of flash rainstorm that just rolls through. And then it's like almost worse in your area because then it doesn't absorb into the ground. So you get flash flooding and that sort of thing. Um, me personally, like I don't, I don't like riding in the rain, but uh, you know it's kind of like inevitable. And I've got some tips to help make your ride more enjoyable. So the absolute first thing, and uh, before I even get into like any equipment on your bike or anything like that, is uh, you need to protect yourself. So what you need to do is you need a good quality rain gear and like there's no question about it like if you cheap out like i've done this over the years like you know i started out and i'd get like some 45 dollar rain suits and then i'd wonder why i'm soaking wet at the end of the day <laughs> and then from there i kind of went to like a mid-grade stuff like where it was you know it was like it was a couple hundred bucks like wasn't uh super cheap but wasn't all that great either and um that kind of stuff the mid-grade stuff like it works great for a short period of time so if you're just riding to work or you're just uh, you know almost home get caught in the rain but it doesn't seem to work for if you have like a full day of rain where you're out in the rain for a couple hours i i don't know why it just doesn't so get yourself a high quality set like i'm rocking the um, pdx lineup from icon and uh it, it wasn't cheap by any means, but uh, I've got quite a few hours in rain with this gear and it seems to keep me dry all the time. Now the reason that rain gear is so important for you is when you start to get cold, you start to get like lethargic, your hands start to seize up, you, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to get impatient, so you're going to make poor decisions and uh, you know because you're like in a rush right like oh man I just want to get home or I just want to get to the hotel or whatever and uh, so that's why rain gear is important because even a slow mist like what we're getting right now at highway speeds for 15 minutes kind of thing you're soaked like I guarantee it and I'm talking from experience because I don't like to pull over and put it on <laughs> Now that we got your body all covered up and you're all cozy, warm, dry, we gotta move on to your hands. Now, the gloves option is, um, like there's there's about a million of them out there. So, uh, like there is no set rules for this. Like I just wear a pair of waterproof leather gloves that are insulated. And the reason I went insulated is because when it rains here, it's cold. Um, so it's it's not like other places like in Seattle and stuff like that where it could still be like almost t-shirt weather and rain in like if it's raining here it's usually on the cusp of snowing too so like right now it's uh, it's about eight degrees Celsius and it's the middle of June so uh, you know that's, that's not very warm so I go with an insulated waterproof glove if you're in a warmer climate I mean, you could uh, you could just wear some of them like gardening gloves that have like the rubber outside. Uh, you could wear like your normal gloves for grip, and then uh, just wear like rubber gloves inside of them so that your hands don't get soaked. But you know, I, I bet even at like 75 degrees, if you're you know riding with soaked hands, they're gonna start to get cold. That's so, you know, it's kind of up to you there, like with the hands thing. Try some different things out. You know, if, you're, if your bike has like a fairing on the front of it, your, your hands probably aren't going to get as, as hit with the rain as like something like mine right now where they're just like wide out in the, you know, wide out in the elements right now. Like there's nothing to keep any rain off of them. And then uh, that moves us into our next one is uh, the footwear. Um, depending on the bike that you have, footwear might not be as big of a deal like you know when I'm riding the FJ in the rain just like because my feet are kind of slightly behind me they're protected by the tank fairing 
they're kind of high up. I found that, like my boots really didn't get wet, but then something like this, like my feet are just, you know, I'm rocking the lazy boy going down the highway into a rainstorm. <laughs> so I wear waterproof cowboy boots, um, mainly because I, uh, like I can't afford just to like, you know, have a waterproof pair of shoes, some running shoes, some uh, mesh shoes, uh, you know, like, Leave the shoe collecting up to uh, other people, but uh, for me, I just wear le uh, like waterproof cowboy boots with a rubber sole all the time. So whether it's hot out or cold out or whatever, I just always got the cowboy boots. And uh, one thing that you you would definitely want to look for on said boots is a rubber sole with a little bit of tread. Um, the reason I say that is because the leather sole cowboy boots could kind of like they get slippery you know you're gonna have a hot day and put your foot down and like the toe part of it is gonna slide until you get your heel down add a little bit of water into the mix and that is going to get much worse I guess I better throw this out there just in case um, your full face helmet as long as you close up the vents you know it should be pretty good uh, there's really nothing you can do about fogging visors it's just a uh, something you got to deal with you know uh, you can get pin locks, you can rub it with shaving cream, uh, toothpaste, uh, you know, I've, I've seen and read all sorts of things. I find, as long as I'm not flapping my gums, breathing heavy, uh, it stays pretty good when you're at a highway speed, which is, you know, awesome. Uh, like, even like right now, like I'm flapping my gums like a, like a hell of a guy, and uh, my visor's not really fogging, so, there you go. If you wear a half helmet, sucks to be you <laughs> you can get some sort of waterproof face mask or whatever goggles you're gonna have a bad time I feel like it <laughs> all right now that we got you all covered head to toe you're nice and warm you're good to go you're safe now we got to move on to the bike one of the biggest things is good tires now I don't necessarily mean like oh this tire is rated five stars for uh, you know weather I mean like rocket bald tires no treads left you did a big burnout a couple weeks ago I'm gonna get that changed at some point here but not today <laughs> because even your most like even uh, like your racing type tires do have some sort of uh, water siping in them now not necessarily slicks like slicks are just smooth straight across that's why they're slicks but if you're rocking like a you know, uh, like, let me think of something like a Q3 or something like that. You know, it's like a fairly aggressive tire for uh, street bikes, but it does have water sipes on it. So making sure your tires are in good condition and at the proper tire pressure will really help you out with the, um, uh, with the traction, right? Because they're going to help to sipe away that water, keep your tire on the pavement, give you traction. Um, now, obviously, one of the big things, which will be the next topic, is you gotta uh, you gotta adjust your riding style. Like if it's just spitting like this, eh, not a big deal. You can kind of ride your normal style. Slower down in the corners though, because there's gonna be a little layer of moisture on that pavement, which is it's pretty slippery. You know, the first 20 minutes of a rainstorm, the road's always like pretty slick because it's kind of getting those oils and that dust up, so it's uh, already working against you. But for a straight line on something like this, I mean, like, you can definitely do some speeds and you're not going to have any sort of issues, provided you're not doing, like, insane speeds. If the rain is getting heavy, like, it's a, it's a torrential downpour and you're, like, splashing through water as you go because it's not draining off the road as fast as it hits, you got to slow her down a little bit. You, uh, like, you just, you can't maintain your usual speed, you know, um... A rainfall like that is dangerous for a car due to hydroplaning and I mean they've got four points of contact and a lot of the times their tire is also contacting the road probably a good two to three inches more than your bike tire like yeah I know you got a sweet bike with a 240 on the back end but uh, you know if you actually take a look at your treads like you only really have about three inches of that center section making contact the rest of it's just kind of like for corners and stuff like that but um you know whereas a car like their their tire is flat like the whole tread is hitting the ground 
So they'll have like up to, what oh, jeez man, like depending on the, like if it's a truck or something like that, they can have eight inches of rubber touching the road with uh, like five to six rows of like sipes to get rid of the water. And if they're gonna hydroplane, you're going to hydroplane with uh, your two inches of contact up at the front and three in the back at best, right? So riding style is definitely important. Another thing to keep in mind too is your visibility will be limited. You're going to uh, like have rain all over your visor, you potentially have fogging going on, so it makes it a little harder to see. So the slowing down gives you a little bit more time to react. Um, like don't slow down to the point where you're hazardous, like you know you wouldn't want to be merging onto this highway at uh, like half of the speed limit because you're going to have a very bad time and the drivers you know their visibility is a little bit reduced as well so there's a strong chance they're going to uh you know give you a little humping from behind and it's not going to be the kind you want <laughs> but um you know don't be shy just to like hang out in the right lane put your hazards on if the visibility is poor and do what you're comfortable with like if that's you know 20 under the speed limit or something like that it's not a big deal people move around you they might flip you off on the way by but uh you know getting honked at fingered and told to uh screw off uh, it's a little safer than um sliding down the road on your back you know with uh cars on wet pavement coming your direction rain protection for your bike uh it, that, that's gonna be like very model specific you know like um the FJ, for example, I just lube the chain once I get back because now the chain's been wet. But uh, the rest of the bike is pretty sealed up. It's good to go. This bike, I've got a little filter sock thing for it uh, to help keep the water out of the air filter. It works mediocre at best, but um, you know it's just, it's something. So, like if you've got exposed filters, spend a little bit of money, get yourself a sock or like a little rain repellent for it or something and uh, then you're going to prevent your bike from dying, you know? Because if you uh, suck up a bunch of water and your bike dies out or your filter kind of collapses on itself because it's all wet, now, you know, you don't necessarily have to worry about riding in the rain, but you're gonna be uh, standing right along one of these signs while your bike drip dries and uh, then you're gonna be glad you had good rain gear because at least you'll be dry while you're standing there. <laughs> If you've uh, got saddlebags or backpack with you or you know depending on your luggage that's really gonna depend on the luggage for like how you protect your stuff inside I always put my stuff in a garbage bag before I put it in the saddlebags I learned that the hard way a couple years back and I was just absolutely miserable like it was awful the bags were like a fabric type material you know like that ballistic nylon or whatever they try and sell you and uh, you know, it, it turns out they were not that water resistant. And uh, like my clothes got soaked. And at that time I had lesser rain gear, so I was soaked. And uh, boy, that's a, that's a trip ruiner. Like you are in a bad mood after that point. <laughs> but um, yeah, even in my Gibby bags, I still wrap my clothes up just cause. Like I'm so paranoid now because I don't want to run the risk. If you're rocking a backpack, you know there's waterproof backpacks available but my advice would still be like put your clothes in a bag at least the clean ones the ones you're gonna put on like if you just want to throw your dirty socks and stuff like that and uh, you know your trusty bedside towel at the bottom of your um, backpack and that gets wet not a big deal but at least you'll have dry clothes to put on um, yeah you know that's 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 my life lessons there is uh, keep your clothes dry <laughs> I think we've just about covered all the topics, really. Um, you know, like we covered protecting yourself, making sure your bike's in good mechanical condition, adapting your driving styles, and a little bit on protecting your luggage. So, you know, that, uh, that pretty well covers the basics. Like, yeah, there'll be little things that you'll come across along the way, and you'll be like, oh yeah, I really wanted that. Or, oh man, I always make sure I have this with the rain. So, you know, make sure you let me know your stuff below. Like, you know, do you, uh, have a certain ritual when it comes to riding in rain that you know you always do just to make sure that your stuff's good or that you're good um, you know let me know below and uh, again like don't be too shy about the rain like it's 
not that dangerous. Don't let it ruin something for you. Because, like, look look right now. Like, I, I barely even made it, like, 40 kilometers, like, 30 miles from my house. And uh, the sky's already clearing up. So, like, you don't always luck out like that. I know I sure don't. But, uh, like, you know, a lot of people would have... Uh, they, they would have canceled the trip. They would have been like, oh no, it's kind of bad. Oh, it's, I don't really want to go and get wet. Uh, <coughs> angry ginger. <laughs> oh man, shots fired. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sure he'll come along for the next trip. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I know this one's pretty long, but uh, we definitely had a lot of topics to cover. So I uh, hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys can teach me something. And, um, you know, I hope you, I hope you get out there and at least try it. Like, make sure you're safe about it and, uh, you know, have fun with it. Uh, I know it's tough. Like, you get, you get slammed in the rain and it's, it's not a good time. Like, you know, I, I would much rather be riding, you know, in t-shirt weather and, uh, like, you know, having to worry about how sweaty my forehead is as opposed to how wet my ass is going to be when I get to where I'm going. But, uh. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time and watching there, guys and gals. Make sure you go on and hit that subscribe button.